Okay, let's jump right in. Today's topic is lower half mechanics, and this is Tips with Trev, the show where I give developing baseball players some easy tips to end their slumps faster and become a superstar sooner. Let's do it. All right, we've all heard it. You know, you're out at a little league game and the parents just yelling, use your legs, Johnny. Uh, do you even know what that means? Let's break it down. There are four things you need to know about lower half mechanics and they are drift, drop, rotate, and block. So let's start with number one, drift. What does drift mean? As you're lifting your leg, you are just drifting forward towards the plate a little bit, not very fast, just a little bit. You just need a couple inches in front of the rubber. You know, people tell you all the time, stay back over the rubber, balance point, whatever else. It's wrong, don't do it. You need to drift forward a little bit. Don't go too fast. You don't wanna to accelerate too fast. Just get your center of mass, so the center of your body, slightly in front of the rubber and your back foot. That's gonna set you up to be able to use gravity to your advantage. And we're gonna talk about that in the next segment, which is to drop. This is the segment where we're utilizing gravity to create energy, and how do we do that? Well, when you drift a little bit in front of the rubber and then you start to drop your body down, instead of being straight up and down, you have a little bit of tilt. And so as you drop down, there gets to be more and more and more and more tilt. And so as you're creating more tilt, you go faster towards the plate. Tilt, when I talk about tilt, I'm talking about the back leg, okay? It's, if you angle it and you start to drop, there's the force vectors push you towards the plate without you having to actually push with your back leg towards the plate. And this is really important because when you actually drive to the plate or when you rotate to the plate, that's two very different things. If you drive, you're extending your back leg early. If you rotate, you're not, and you're positioning the hip socket the correct way to be able to send energy up the chain. So it's really important that you drift and then when you drop, it creates the energy for you as you go down the mound. It positions the femur and the hip socket in the correct way where you can actually rotate the hips effectively instead of forcing the hips open or extending the back leg and creating a big spike in energy, but way too early in the delivery and throwing everything off. So number two is to drop. Number three is to rotate. And it's a big difference between rotating and driving or pushing or extending or anything else. Rotation happens by the back knee kind of rotates down, it gets lower, it turns over, but the back leg stays bent. And the hip socket, or the hip level I should say, stays even. So you go from this to this, you don't go and elevate or tilt or something like that. It's super important that you rotate, and I'll show you a couple examples here on the screen of people that are actually rotating versus people that are extending. The back knee needs to turn down. The back foot, actually, the mechanism for this is the back foot everts, so it rolls a little bit, and then the back knee turns down. You internally rotate a little bit in the hip socket, and the hips start to turn, so that when your front foot lands, your hips have opened, and they're about 45 degrees open, somewhere in that range, it doesn't have to be exact. And 45 degrees, I mean, for a righty, if facing towards uh, third base, the third base and the first base angle is 90 degrees open. They would be somewhere between, kind of pointing off towards shortstop. Your back hip would be pointing towards shortstop and your front hip would be somewhere towards the first base dugout. So they need to be open a little bit. You wanna open your hips early. And if you do the first two steps here by drifting and dropping, you're probably going to be able to accomplish getting your hips open earlier. You want your hips opening as early as possible and you want your torso delaying as long as possible. So you can rotate your torso as late as possible but your hips rotate as early as possible. So number three, just to recap, is to rotate. We don't wanna drive, we don't wanna extend. Yes, there is some driving going on but it is because we have drifted and dropped and so now as we start to rotate, gravity is doing the drive for us. It's creating the energy for us because we've positioned ourselves the correct way. And that leads us to tip number four, which is to block. And this is all about the front leg. In biomechanics, a block means that when a segment, a block means that a segment has completely stopped moving. So think of 
a car crash where the car hits something and everything in there just launches forward or a whip. If you go to whip a towel or like a, a whip or bull whip, you stop the handle and then the energy transfers up the chain. In order for the next segment to efficiently accelerate, the prior segment has to completely decelerate. So any time your front leg lands and there's any movement in it whatsoever, you're leaking energy, you're losing energy, which means there's less to transfer to your upper half, which means there's less to transfer to your arm and to the ball, so less velocity and that's, as we know, not a good thing. That's not what we're after. So that's what block means. It means when you're, you, know, you gotta land, your, your front leg has to be stiff. Now that doesn't mean it lands completely extended, but it lands and it firms up. And there's some different ways you can go about doing this. There's a lot of people in the big leagues that land open, they land closed, they land, it doesn't really matter. It's just for your body, you need to be able to land and stop your front leg from moving and create a brace around it. The other part of this is this is actually what like sparks all the energy up the chain. And this is the point where you actually start to throw hard or trying to throw hard. You should not try to throw hard prior to this. It's all about positioning prior to this. Once the front leg hits, if you've positioned your hips correctly, the front leg, the impulse of the front leg hitting will actually drive the hips open on its own. You don't have to do anything after that. You just position the hips so that when the front foot hits, that energy clicks the hips in and they finish off rotation. Then once they speed up and finish off rotation, the lower half is stopped completely, which means all the energy in the system is transferred up to the upper half, to the arm and to the ball eventually. So blocking is super important. Everyone who talks about, oh, you gotta land on a soft front side and you know make sure that knee stays bent and be quiet, you know, land on a piece of rice paper or something like that, wrong, don't do it. You wanna have an explosive block. You wanna hit and stop as abruptly as possible. There is probably too abrupt. You don't wanna land with a stiff front leg that's completely locked out and hyperextend anything like that. But you want that impact to be violent as long as you've set yourself up correctly beforehand. So the four key points to remember are, one, drift, two, drop, three, rotate, and four, block. If you do those four things, you probably have good or elite lower half mechanics. So that's today's episode. If you found value in this episode, if you learned something, if you think this could help someone that you know, please subscribe and share this video with them. It would really help me help more people. That's something I'm passionate about. My goal is to get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of 2020 so I can help all those people. So leave me your comments below, hit the like button, and I'll see you guys on Friday. I'm out.